that pension reform law Governor Christie signed in 2011 is headed back to state Supreme Court, this time over a freeze on pensioners' yearly cost of living adjustments. Last year, an appellate division ruled the COLAs are a contractual right. If the state Supreme Court agrees, it could add more than a billion dollars to what pensioners are owed at a time when the state pension funds are already facing $40 billion in unfunded liabilities and may run dry within a decade. Joining us is former state Supreme Court Justice Peter Vernierno, who's going to walk us through this gently. It's very complicated, I know. But first of all, what are COLAs? Well, a COLA, as you suggested, is an adjustment to someone's uh, base pension, for lack of a better term, that allows that amount to be increased depending on inflation or other factors. So if the state Supreme Court upholds the appellate court's de decision, says they're entitled to this cost of living adjustments, what's the impact on the solvency of the pension fund? Well, the case would actually not be over at that point because the appellate division, although it ruled that you do have a contractual right to a COLA, it did not rule whether that right had been impermissibly impaired because the appellate division said it needed more facts, it needed a, a better record. So the case would actually be remanded in that situation to go back to the trial Just court. Just kicked back to the appellate division? It, no, go back to the trial court. Oh, the to original have a, court, wow. Go back to the trial court to determine whether the state was then justified, reasonable, in departing from the contract. But it's still very much a question. The court first has to decide, the Supreme Court, whether in fact it is a contractual right for a COLA. So will the public worker unions simply argue that COLAs are a contractual right? Well, I don't know what the unions will argue, obviously, but I assume that they will say that the appellate division was correct, that uh, uh, the COLAs are a matter of statute, that they are included in what the legislature had in mind when it said pension benefits uh, are, uh, are non-affordable, uh, 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 forfeitured. Uh, pension rights, but that's very much the question. Are COLAs included in what is thought of as a base pension, or are they something in addition to? The state is arguing that they are an adjustment. They are not part of base pension. The Pell Division disagreed. It's up to the Supreme Court to decide the question. Let me add an additional complication. Pensions, my understanding is that the COLAs are paid for from working people paying into their pensions, not from the state budget. Does that make a difference? Well, the Appellate Division found that the COLAs at issue were pre-funded. They're not depending on uh, appropriations. That may be true for many of the pension systems, but I'm not sure that's true for all of them. Uh, one of the complexities of this case is that there are a number of pensions and they're all a little different or they have some differences. So I think one of the things that would have to be sorted out in this case, either by the trial court or some higher court, is exactly who are the pensioners who are covered by these particular COLAs and who are not. Wow, that adds, that really adds a complication. This is a very complicated case. The, this is the same st state Supreme Court that allowed Governor Christie to underfund the payments that he's going to make this year. Um, does that give you an idea of how they're going to vote this time? Well, technically the issues are separate, but I could envision a situation where you would need to at least have to consider the prior case, the so-called Burgess case. In that case, the Supreme Court said that the legislature was not authorized to enter into a contract that would essentially bind future legislatures in multiple appropriation years to fund the pensions. This case, the so-called Burke case, the case we're now talking about, is about whether there's a contract to pay the COLAs or whether the legislature has discretion to suspend the COLAs, which they did. Governor Christie said repeatedly that there's just no money. He'd like to pay, there's no money to pay. If the court says you have to pay the COLAs and there's no money, what then? Well, that goes back to my earlier point. There would be a remand, it would go back to the trial court, and then there would have to be a hearing to see exactly whether it was reasonable or not reasonable to suspend the In COLAs. In the first place. Thank you very much yes. for being with us, Peter Verniero. Yeah. Thank you.